Joanne, what did they say about the Mud People Festival of Philippines? Hmm, I think it is like the La Tomatina, tomato throwing festival of Spain. Are you trying to make fun of me? I am sure that it is not about throwing mud on people. Alright, I shall explain. Okay, tell me. The Mud People Festival dates back to the Second World War when the Japanese captured Philippines. Really? Yeah. After capturing, they assembled all the men from Bibi Clad Village in front of the church to execute. Huh? Were the Japanese so cruel? That was war time, Jim. Everyone does horrible things. The women and children then prayed to St. John the Baptist to save their men. Then what happened? A heavy downpour damaged all the ammunition of the enemy and the men were saved. But Joanne, where are the mud people in this incident? Listen, when the lives were saved, people of the village rolled on the mud to celebrate and they all looked like mud people. That was interesting. But did they wear a leather dress like the saint? It's not leather. They used banana leaves to cover their body. Oh, then what was this news about the Mud People Festival on the TV? They were showing visuals of the celebration, Jim. But why were they collecting the candles from the people? So you noticed that, huh? These candles will be burned in the church of St. John the Baptist. I think we should ask Uncle Francis to narrate the story of St. John the Baptist today. Good morning, children. Good morning, Uncle. Uncle Francis, we saw an interesting report on St. John the Baptist. That was the story of the Mud People Festival of Philippines. Oh, you saw that. The people of the Philippines are firm believers of St. John the Baptist. Maybe I will continue from where I stopped yesterday. The next part contains the story of John the Baptist. That's wonderful. Please start, Uncle. After the death of Zechariah and Elizabeth, John, under the protection of the Lord, lived in the desert for many years. All of you repent. The kingdom of God has come near. What is he saying? Is he a prophet? Don't you know him? His name is John, the son of Zechariah and Elizabeth. The elders say that he is the one the prophet spoke about. Huh? The Messiah? No, not the Messiah, but the one who will prepare the path for his coming. Oh, that means the Messiah would be coming soon. Yes, that's what the prophecy is said. He is a fearless man. He openly speaks to the Pharisees and Sadducees. I really like his courage. Repent from all the wrongdoing and baptize. This is the only way you can be saved. Master, could you baptize me? Come to River Jordan tomorrow. You brood of vipers, do you think you can escape from God's wrath? You? What do you think of yourself, a great prophet? Oh, leave him. He's the one spoken by prophet Isaiah, preparing the path straight for the Lord. I'm the voice shouting out in the wilderness to make way for the Lord. Repent from your sins. Do not be proud being a descendant of Abraham. If God wishes, he can raise children of Abraham from these stones. John then met the tax collectors. You greedy men, the axe is already placed at the root of the trees. The tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut and thrown into the fire. Huh? We will definitely be not permitted to enter the kingdom of God. We are doing such a sinful job, earning the wrath of both men and God. Hey, I have an idea. Why don't we ask the prophet how we can be saved? That's a good idea. Come, let's go and ask him. that moment, a few rich men were also passing by. Seeing them, John said to them, If you have two shirts, share with the people who do not have anything. You must also feed the hungry. And then some soldiers approached him and asked, Master, what do you expect us to do? Do not threaten people and take money from them. You should be content with the pay you receive. Hey, 
Is the prophet going to be here to baptize the people? Yeah, he is going to reach here any time now. Look around. People are come here all over Judea and all are waiting for his arrival. Many people say that he is the Messiah. We have been waiting for ages. Miriam, I do not know if he really is, but his words are truly very powerful. Hey, give way for the master. Please give way. Hello friend, my mission is to take the path for the Messiah. Master, are you not the Messiah? Messiah is much more powerful than me. I'm not even worthy to untie the straps of his sandal. I am baptizing you with water. The Messiah will baptize you with the fire and the Holy Spirit. But master, how will we recognize the Messiah? He is coming to harvest his crops. He will gather the wheat into his barn and the chaff will be put into unquenchable fire. That day, many people got baptized by John. After some time, Jesus arrived at the river Jordan. Jesus had come from Galilee to Jordan to be baptized by John. When John saw Jesus, he immediately recognized him. Jesus, this is the Lamb of God who will take away the sins of the world. He is the Messiah we were waiting for. Have you come to get baptized by me? Yes, John. But it is me who needs to be baptized by you. Let it be like this now. This has to happen for fulfilling the scriptures. When John baptized Jesus, the heavens were opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him in the form of a dove and a voice was heard from the heaven. This is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. There goes the Lamb of God. Master, can we go and stay with Jesus for some time? Knowing that the time of Jesus had arrived, John asked his disciples to follow Jesus from now on. You should. He must become greater and I must become lesser. Meanwhile, the Pharisees and the Levites were making plans to put John in prison. They were really annoyed at the teachings of John. Huh? How dare does he call us brood of vipers? He should definitely be punished for his blabbering. Yes, the people have stopped respecting us. All of them are now following this pretender. We need to act quick. How about we file a complaint against him to King Herod? Hmm, that's a good idea. But you should tell the king that John is speaking ill of him. Ha ha ha! Leave that to me. He's actually speaking to the people that King Herod has committed a sin by taking the wife of his brother, Herodia, as his wife. He is compelling the people to blame the king for going against the commandments of the Lord. Yet, why isn't the king doing anything against him? The king fears John. He believes John is a holy and righteous man. So will John keep going around the country speaking bad about the king? I think. The only option is to inform the queen and queen in turn can convince the king. Yes, that's a good idea. I'm sure that will work. Once we can put him behind the bars, we can lead a less embarrassing life. These wicked men were successful in convincing the queen against John. Like they had planned, Herodia convinced King Herod to arrest him and John was put in prison. Happy birthday to you, my majesty. Thank you, General. My greetings to you, Queen of Judea. Thanks for coming to the banquet, General. Birthday wishes, my lord. Thank you, Commander. Let me thank all of you for joining for this wonderful banquet. All of you may enjoy the drinks and the food. My lord, I wish to inform something to the esteemed guests gathered here for the banquet. Huh? What is this surprise announcement, darling? Dear, my daughter Salome will be performing in front of our guests. <laughs> that was a real surprise, dear. All the guests gathered for the banquet really enjoyed the performance of Salome. My lord, Princess Salome's performance was unbelievable. We really enjoyed her performance. 
Hello media, please come. I am well pleased with your performance. Tell me, what should I gift you for this excellent entertainment? Oh, father. Don't be shy, dear. Ask me anything. I can even gift you half of my kingdom. <laughs> father, let me ask my mother. Mom, what should I ask the king? Shall I ask for gold ornaments or diamonds? No, dear. This is the right time to destroy my greatest enemy. Enemy? Who is that, Mom? Don't you know who that is? He is John the Baptist, who is right now in prison. Go! Go and tell the king to get him beheaded. I will do that, Mother. Father, please give me the head of John the Baptist on a platter. Huh? What? What do you mean, Salome? Yes, Father. You did promise me that you will give anything I ask for. But... but... King Herod was very much embarrassed. He had made this promise in front of all the guests gathered there, and he was forced to concede to the request made by Salome. Finally, the time has arrived. God, I hear your calling. Pro prophet, please do not curse me. I am here to obey the command of the king. God, I am ready. Prophet, please pardon me. Salome, isn't this what you wish for? Here, take this. When John's disciples heard the news, they were shocked. They took his body and buried it in a tomb. That was so sad. Saint John the Baptist is considered as the greatest among saints. He lived in the desert alone for 24 years. His heart was touched with the love for the Savior right from his birth. He earnestly desired to meet Jesus and prepared the way for him. Even after meeting and baptizing Jesus, he did not follow him. Instead, he continued with his duties and sent all his disciples to Jesus. That's a great example of faith, uncle. Uncle, when is the feast of St. John celebrated? The Catholic Church commemorates St. John the Baptist on two feast days. June 24th is celebrated as the Nativity of St. John the Baptist and August 29th, Beheading of St. John the Baptist. Thank you, Uncle, for narrating this wonderful story of the prophet. A prophet who was even mistaken as the Messiah by the people. I'm glad I was able to tell you this, children. It's always my pleasure. Okay, that's all for today. Goodbye. Bye, Uncle.